Miss Deborah Day. <laughs> Have a seat. Ah. We got we got this on film. I know this is a good moment right here. So we're going to do a little sharing today. How's that sound? Awesome. Okay. From Michigan, correct? Yep. Flint, Michigan. Yes. Have you guys heard of Flint, Michigan? Have a few issues with water in Flint right now, huh? Mm hmm And then you left Flint, and how did you get to California, and how did you travel? I left Flint when I was 18, and I came to California on a one-way ticket, and my clothes, and a jar of peanut butter, with $150 in my pocket. And you had to go through some life experiences. Yes. Different jobs. What are some of the jobs that you had uh, well, prior to Countrywide? Prior to Countrywide. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the first jobs I had was actually cleaning um, commercial buildings. And I believe the uh, minimum wage back then was 320 an hour. And one of our neighbors, the two girlfriends that I was living with, said, oh, I could give you guys a job. And we was like, okay, great. He said, you know, just help me clean these commercial buildings, these offices, and you will get paid. So we were like, okay, great. Well, it was three of us. So we, it took us like one hour to do uh, this one particular office. So when it was time to get paid, he said, okay, I'm gonna pay you guys on Saturday. So early Saturday morning, because we all were struggling, didn't have any money, we were knocking on his door to get paid, and our pay was $3.20. Because that was only one hour worth of work. And your next job? Bob's Big Boys. How long you last? Uh, I think I was there for about maybe six to eight months, making four twenty, four ninety an hour. Next job. Uh, I got into. I went to um, apply for a bunch of jobs, working, uh, walking up and down Ventura Boulevard. I, I don't know if you guys, you guys probably wouldn't know if you don't live there, but Ventura Boulevard is a really busy. Um, street and it has a bank on every corner so I decided that I was going to get dressed and grab my um, my little uh, resume and go apply in every bank on every corner and that was when you could send you know walk your resume in and it was like 110 degrees um, at that time but I had my dress on, I had my briefcase, and I went into every bank on the corner, and I got a job at Bank of America, <coughs> making $1,017 a month. Well, you've had a pretty intense resume to present Bob's big boy, $3 an hour for a job that you only work one hour. That's a pretty intense resume <laughs> to get into Bank of America. Yes. So how did you, heck, did you get into Bank of America? <laughs> Because I always, always reach higher than, you know, I just reach really, really high. You know, I really go for it. And I uh, got myself, they had an advertisement in the newspaper, in the LA Times, for a executive assistant. Now, mind you, I have a 12th grade education. I did not go to college, but I managed to get myself an interview with one of the top executives at uh, Bank of America. And when I went in there, they were just looking at me like, how did, how did you get this interview? With a, with a Bob's big boy resume, <laughs> working $3 an hour yes. for once. Only one time you did that job? Only one time. Oh, okay, go ahead. So um, they went ahead and interviewed me. And they said, for this position, you have to be able to type over 100 words a minute. So I started to say, uh-oh, you know. So they gave me a typing test, and I did not hit the 100 words a minute. But through the interview, they just saw something in me. And they said, you did not hit 100 words per minute, but we like you so much that we 
went and spoke with someone else who is hiring in Bank of America, and they're coming in to speak with you right now. And that was in the customer service department. And so I got the job as a customer service uh, rep, um, answering phones, like when you guys call the bank, why did my check bounce, insufficient funds, what's my balance, what cleared, what didn't clear, and that's how I got into banking. And the next job? And then I got a job at a company called Imperial Bank Mortgage, and then they went under. And then the next job was uh, I worked for a broker, a mortgage broker. They um, hired me to do processing. And I, the next job was another company called PIB Mortgage, where I became an account executive. Um, and they went under. So the account executive position was the position that I had really, really wanted. So I just kept striving for that position, and I landed a job at Countrywide Home Loans like 10 years later. I was, this was all in my 20s. And I landed a job at Countrywide Home Loans as, uh, with that position again as an account executive. And what happened when you first got into Countrywide? Um, great things happened. They trained me. I was an assistant to one of the top producers. Uh, she Actually, she was the top producer, so she taught me a lot. And I, uh, I got promoted. She left the company, and I got promoted um, to an account executive. They uh, assigned me a, a list. An account executive, when you're out in the field, you're going to visit brokers, um, for them to send you their, uh, their loans versus them sending uh, like Bank of America or a Chase. I wanted them to send countrywide the business. So I got a dormant account. So all of the accounts that they assigned me were inactive, pissed off at countrywide for whatever reason. And I had to go door to door, which we call it B2B, and get these brokers to submit business to Countrywide. So you had to go to brokers who were mad at you? Who was mad at my company, yes. Mad at your company. <laughs> and what happened? And I was, you know, B2B, just door to door, knocking on the doors, making it happen, going in. They were giving me some of the worst loans because they don't know me. You know, they're pissed off at Countrywide or, you know, they have their um, lender of choice. So they would send me or give me the worst loans that they had on their desk. And um, I just would keep going. Every week I had a route. On Mondays I would go, in this, uh, go to this city. On Tuesdays I would go to this city. On Wednesdays I would go to this city. And it became um, where they expected me uh, to be in on Wednesday on this date. And when I didn't show up, they started to say, wait, wait a minute, where's Deborah from Countrywide? So they would start to call me, hey, you didn't come in today. Well, I really, I really wanted to say, well, I'm tired of you sending me those crappy loans, and I, you're right, I didn't come in today. But I didn't say that, and so I just continued on. And eventually, eventually, they started to send me good deals, good loans, loans that I could close. And how did your income work out? My income when I uh, first started at Countrywide uh, was around 50000 a year. That's what I made. And when I got promoted the first year, I hit 100000 and it just went on up to 250000 a year to 350000 a year. And you had an opportunity to get a not one house, but a couple houses, right? I did. I bought my first house um, for half a million in California. And about two years after having that home, uh, sold it and bought a $1.5 million home. Oh. 5,000 square feet. Oh. Built it from ground up. Not bad from Bob's big boy. <laughs> <laughs> People say what it takes, and we, I talk about stories, and sometimes I share my story, but it takes one to know one. Does that make sense? You know, anybody who's successful, anybody's successful, failure is part of the equation. 
for anybody. It's no different, like the video said. It's no different for anybody. Like, what is, what is she doing? Persistent, focused, not letting distractions stop her. I understand it. Well, she don't. Yes, she does. She don't need to get into her personal distractions, but everyone has them. The formula is simple. Rise and grind. What does she do? Rise and grind. Yeah, but what does she do? Rise and grind. What does she do? Rise and grind. Persistent. Focus. What do I need to do to be the best? What do I need to do to be entitled unbeatable? What do I got to do to be unbeatable? What do I got to do to be the best? And then all of a sudden, 2008 law came, and we all lost. And even though some of her people told her to sell her house before it went under, what did you decide to do? I decided to be persistent, because I was not giving up my dream home. And I ended up losing my home because, you know, it, it taught me a lesson, number one, to listen sometime. You know, sometimes you can be so persistent that you really miss, you know, the message that someone is giving you. But then it also taught me, and I always think, if I, if I listened to that person then and didn't try, today I wouldn't know if I could have kept my house. So I stayed in it. I stayed persistent. I woke up. I grinded. I woke up. I stayed persistent. I had that tenacity to win. And even though I didn't win, I lost the house, but I went out trying and giving my very best. So now I know that because I gave my very best, I lost my house, but I gave my very best. So today I can stand proudly and say, I gave it my all, and it just wasn't meant for me to be able to keep my house during the recession times. You will fail. It's going to happen. But what are you going to do with that failure? Are you going to get up and grind again? That's the key. But you guys already know that, don't you? Then you went to Chase. Then I got hired at Chase after some tough, tough, tough. I mean, there was times where I didn't have gas to put in my car to even go look for a job, and I was still in that mentality of 350000 a year. So the jobs that I was being presented were like back to 50000 and I was like, um, huh? What? How is this going to pay for this mortgage that I have? So um, I got hired. I took... I, you know, ate a slice of humble pie, and I took a job making, I think, like 40000 a year at Chase and as a, a banker. And I was a banker. I was a top producer, um, and they saw something in me, and they said, we want to put you in a management position, a management trainee. So I got nominated to go into a management training position um, at Chase, which takes three months. It's a three-month um, position, and they teach you how to run a branch. So you bounce from different branches, different managers, and you learn how to um, run one of their branches. And then finally we met, and what did I tell you? Um, you told me that... I cannot help your immediate situation, but I can definitely help your future. Do you guys see 700 score? You hear her getting 100,000? And because she's sitting at the millionaire table, even though Craig's not here and Jennifer's not here, that opportunity that Craig said, we're going to put some people through first, she's one of the first. I always tell people, there's things and I'm giving you clues. And I was like, guys, I don't care whatever you do. Make sure you become Ruby by all means necessary. And some people heard it and they tried. They gave it a shot. Some people gave it a legitimate shot. 
And there are other things we're going to talk about because we're having a millionaire lunch that myself, there's some things John doesn't even know about he's going to have access to because we share with each other. We give to each other. And if I was you, we will not have another millionaire lunch in January. <laughs> I would make those opportunities. Of course it's supposed to be hard. It ain't supposed to be easy. Do you understand that? Well, I'm wondering why. What can I do? Just go to work. Door to door, person to person, and don't be the convincing business. I'm going to show you numbers on how to do this. So what does Deborah do? Uh, do you believe you have the ability to think 700 credit scores into existence? Do you guys believe that? Yes. Do you believe it? Absolutely. That's the formula. She believed it. That's why she got it. And there was times she used to come to me, where's my turn? Where's my turn? Am I right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, keep believing. Keep writing. Keep <laughs> believing. Keep writing. Then all of a sudden, what happened? 700 credit score. <laughs> there it is. From what? What's that right there? What's that? 736. Give her a hand. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the self image mirror action tools. Go ahead. Okay, so a lot of people call me and they want to know how are you doing it? How are you signing up all these newsletters? What is the secret? And I tell them, you know, the secret is the system. That's the secret. You know, I'm not, I'm just someone who knows how to follow a system. When I'm told something, I do it. Simple. And follow up too, but literally, that's part of the system. It's follow up. So we have the self image millionaire action tools, right? And I just follow the self million image millionaire action tools. Page two is the blue page. It should say, well, you guys have black and white, but it says I'm working on it to make it happen. You guys got that? I'm working on it to make it happen. That's exactly what I do. I work on it until. I make it happen. Example, last night I was at the dinner table with Mr. Nickens and Mr. Mincer, and it was about 10.30 or so. I'm not sure what time it was. And I had to make Ruby. I had one more that I needed to sign up. So I worked on it to make it happen. And what I did was... I text the guy and said, log into MavetTV.com right now before Steve went up to do the presentation. Now, this is someone who I have been faithfully texting and calling for over a year, and I have the proof right here on my phone. I showed Mr. Mincer and Mr. Nickens last night. I have been calling and texting this guy, and I showed him the text thread since February of 2016. And there would be like three, four months that he wouldn't even respond to me. But I just, I have a tenacity to win. I'm relentless. And he would respond, then three more months would go by, and no response, but I just kept texting, copy and pasting the same message. Copy and paste, copy and paste. Because you, until you tell me, don't text me or don't call me, you will hear from me. Period. So wait a minute. You had, you got people that'll tell you no. Yes, I do have people that tell me no. Oh. You got people that'll say they're going to get in and not get in. All the time. You got people that are tell you to. They'll talk to you next week, and don't, then they don't even answer their phones? All the time. <laughs> what is that? She's do the same things that happen to you. All the time. Hey, Rodney, we got to put her phone. Can we put her phone on the screen so they can see that thread? Is that possible? Not possible. Yeah. You, gotta, you guys got to see this. She's been telling me about it, but when I seen it, I was like, dang. Well, why would I want to do that, Mr. C? Well, maybe you don't. But understand how we 
as leaders, myself, Craig, John, and Jennifer are thinking. We're bottom line type of people. I want to let you know. We're bottom line. We're, we love helping people, but if you're not contributing to the community that we believe in, when we're saying follow the system, let's say the roles are reversed. And you said, and we came to you, you own this company, you're like, look, we're going to have credit restoration, we got business funding, we got newsletters, we're going to help you, you're going to help you, Mr. C, with your passion and your purpose, you know, we're going to help you with 700 scores. All you got to do is contribute to the system. Be tenacious, be focused, and everything that you want, you will have the opportunity. We won't give it to you, Mr. C., but we're going to give you every opportunity to achieve your dream and vision. And by the way, here's our resume. And you helped other million people become millionaires, and you know, you're showing stacks, and you're, you're doing everything to say, we are documented. And on top of that, you've helped other people. You've seen them. You're like, here, Mr. C, go hang out with the people that we've helped. And I'm hanging out with them. I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm hanging out with Dow Mooney and Deborah Day. And I'm like, chill, all right, I'm with it. You gave this to me. And you say, all you got to do is follow the system and contribute to the system that's going to contribute to you. And then I'll say, yeah, I'm in it. Then I don't attend any calls. We say go to the advanced trainings. I'm not there. We say compete for contests, and I'm never competing. And we say, make sure you make sure you, you pay your newsletter, and I'm skipping every other month. And you got this power, and you want it to give it to me. You want me to be successful. But I'm, not, but I'm doing those things. Would you want to continue to give it to me? What would you think about me? Do you think I was serious? Do you think I was dedicated? Do you think I was passionate for change? Sometimes that's how what I think about other people. I'm watching what you do. This is, this is no guarantee, but I'm telling you, they say you get three legitimate shots in a lifetime. My question to you is, can you guarantee me you haven't used your other two? Because I know this is one of them. I know to the bottom of my heart, because I put too much time, energy, and winners win and losers lose, and I'm with a team of winners. We win, period. That's what we do. You're in the best seat. Don't care about there's not a, because th this room will be packed. I don't know when. I can't tell you when. We're going to be coming to Atlanta. This room right here won't be big enough. This will happen. I've been there, done that, wore that T-shirt. I've been in that room with the water filters. There was only a few people there in Massachusetts. And then 24 months, OMG, man, I was doing presentations, and it was like packed. Paying. I was like, and sometimes I'm like, oh, my God. It really has happened. Then one day I'm driving down in my sports car going to Brooklyn, New York. And I realized I have arrived. So we got, we got you plugged in? Yep, on the plane. Look at that. Let's go over this, this stream here. Who's this? Uh, this is Michael. And actually, it was not February, it's October 28th, 2016. And it just goes, you know, hey, Mike, was Deborah following up with you to get you started on the program. We were supposed to speak today at 4 um, Pacific Standard Time to get you started. Call me when you're available. Um, so I had gone over the website presentation with him then, and he wanted to get started, but he kind of disappeared on me. October 29, 2016, just pretty much copy-paste. November 2nd, same, pretty much copy-paste, a little extra stuff in there um then he that's from october to december he responded i have a question if you remember i have a business two years with trade lines i have a friend of mine that wants to be a partner so um i use my personal credit with him and as a guarantor he has 800 scores 
and we talked. I called him. We talked about it. December twenty second, um, he that grant 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 tours um, didn't come through for him. So it's me again, December 22nd, hey Michael, um, yes you can use your friend. And he said, okay, I've been trying. And December 30th, hi Michael, happy holidays. When do you wanna get started? January 28th, when Mr. C said, when did your credit scores jump? It actually jumped to 783. Yes. How many would love to have a 783 credit January. Score? I could not believe my eyes. So I said, okay, let me send this to Michael. So January 28th, I sent him a copy or a photo of my uh, credit score. Check out my new scores. I was just approved for 40K. And then February 8th, I sent it to him again. Uh, February 10th, another message. And then he responded after, what, two months? Yes, I've been working towards getting a house closed. And then... Hold uh, on one second. This is a technique I'm going to tell you she's been using lately, and it's been working. What is this? <laughs> she, she's been doing so, I don't know why stuff works. I don't care any more wrong as it works. I'm like, you be saying that? She said, yeah, and it works. I'm like, okay. Works every time. Go ahead, tell what you what your, what your new thing So is. what I tell people, you guys ready? You need to write this down uh, or take a picture of it because it works every time I say this. You create a sense of urgency with the person. And I say, and it's on the screen, I'm putting through a new batch of clients today. I would love your name to be on the list. Let's get you started. I'm putting through, or I'm submitting, a new batch of clients to work on their credit. I would love to have you on that list and save a slot for you. Let's get you started. But when did you do this? This was what? This was February 10th of this year. So for those of you who want stuff to just happen, why did it have, why did it work? As soon yeah. as I did it, it didn't work, Deborah. All right. What's today's date? When did she start doing this? February. Go October ahead, of last year. October, why? Oh my God. I mean, when she started doing I Got a Batch. When did you start that one? Yeah, it was October. I thought it was February, but it's October All right, of ahead. last year. When you did the batch, I put in through Oh, at February 10th. Yeah, February 10th. That's when she, I'm putting through a new batch of clients today. I would like, but once again, you guys want it to work. And sometimes people, it, one thing he never said was an important word. Anyone tell me that word? No. No. You ain't saying? Well, they didn't respond. You think that to be no. <laughs> that ain't no. You understand? That's just, they don't respond. It's not now. Even no is not now. You got what I'm saying. Go ahead. Okay, so that was February 10th, February 14th. I did it again, putting through a new batch of clients. Um, today, we'd love for your name to be on the list. Let's get you started. February 18th, hey, Michael, are you ready to get started? February 20th, hey, Michael, are you ready to get started on your credit? I'm submitting a new batch of clients and would love um, to be able to include you. March 9th, hey, Michael, you ready to get started? Just copy and paste, and really, March 13th, hey, Michael, you ready to get started on your credit? March, he finally responded. Do you think it's too much just to copy and paste somebody? So you guys text people all the time. Is it making you money? <laughs> oh, did you see what happened on Atlanta Housewives? Are you Donald Trump, he's getting on my nerve. Well, is that really making you money? How about putting your, your pole in the lake and try to catch a fish? You guys got this? They ain't no miracle. It's, all you hear in these videos is grind, work hard, it's gonna be hard. <laughs> is that what you're hearing? Is that what you're seeing? Is that what you're doing? Go ahead. So March 13th, he responded, I will be soon as I close on my home this month. That was March 13th. April 10th, I waited about a month. Hey, Michael, you ready to get started on the program? April 11th, copy-paste. Hey, Michael, you ready to get started? April 13th, hey, Michael, you ready to get started? May 2nd, 
Hey, Michael, June 21st. Hey, Michael, June 29th. Hey, Michael, you ready to get started? June 30th. Hey, Michael, you ready to get started? July 3rd. Hey, Michael, it's Deborah. You ready to get started? July 14th. Hey, Michael, it's Deborah. Just copy and paste. <laughs> July 15th. Hey, Michael, it's Deborah. You ready to get started on the program? Uh, July 19th. Hey, it's Deborah. August 20th. Hey, Michael, it's Deborah. You ready to get started? September 19th. Hey, it's Deborah. You ready to get started? September 27th. Hey, Michael, you ready to get started? Sunday. This past Sunday. Hey, Michael, it's Deborah. You ready to get started? And Tuesday, he responded and said, how much is your program? <laughs> but didn't get in right then. Go ahead. So he didn't get in on Tuesday. 82 to, 82 to start and 98 99 a month. So let me give you guys, this is what I say. For you, it's 82 a month, because it is. It's $10 for the membership and 72 for the newsletter, right? Well, Identity Guard gives 30 days free. So that's $82 to start. Then next month, it's 90, I say 99 but Mr. C told me stop saying 99, so I put it, it's 98.99 on, uh, you know, monthly, you know. So I mean that could make a difference, because if you say it's 98.99 a month, well, what if they had 82 dollars in their account? Well, that's all they need the first month is the 82, because Identity Guard is free for 30 days. You just let them know it's going to kick in next month at the 98.99. That could. Sometimes that's all people have, you know, $10, $12, whatever that number is. That's why I told them $98.99, $7.99. One dollar to people, psychologically, you don't know what people are thinking. We fall for it all the time. $19.99, it's really $21.99. You get it for $19, oh, I got a sale. Especially women who love shopping. Anything to make you get, uh, have an opportunity to go shopping. Oh my God, it's all it's $2 saving, I gotta go shopping. What? $2 savings, I gotta go shopping. Okay, I, 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 <laughs> My daughter, oh, I'm gonna go shopping, Dad. Well, how much money are you saving? $30, $40 oh, a buck? What? You just want a reason to go shopping. No, I don't. I'm saving money, Dad. You taught me to save money. I gotta shut up, even if it's a dollar. Go ahead. So after that, when you know, he said how much, I told him how much, and then I said it again. I'm sending in a new batch of clients. I would love to include you. He wanted to know about the, you know, what's the website again? So I really, you know, I don't like them to go to the website by themselves because it's so much information on the site. But I went ahead and did it because I know he's analytical and he's going to read through everything. So I went ahead and gave him the site. And, you know, I just communicated with them. I gave it to him. First, I told him a little bit about what we're, you know, again, over and over. Um, even though I've said it over and over, I said it again. Then I, then I gave him the website. And then on Tuesday, hey, just following up, um, did, um, did you want to get the program? Did you have any questions? I will be sending it in my next batch of clients. <laughs> Are you interested? And I would love to you know, include you in this batch. And then he said, oh, I reviewed the website again. It's $10 down and $10 a month. I mean, $10 down and seven two a month. Yes. Then I went into Identity Guard is $16.99, a total of $98.99. However, the first month is $82 because Identity Guard is free for 30 days. Okay, so we went, we went on and on, you know, a little bit. And um, on, I would be home around 7 Central Time. I believe that was last night. And I told him to jump on the vet TV, watch the event. He did. And... He sent me, where is it? Right there. I won't put his information up. So, but that was, that was it. I was sitting at the table with Mr. Mincer and Rodney last night and he sent me over his information and that gave me my Ruby status. Awesome.